James Wilson, during the progress of this trial, you have refused to testify in your own defense, and by your silence, have prevented your counsel from adequately defending you. You are charged with manslaughter, and in the evidence presented, in the absence of explanation, would warrant this court in finding you guilty. Before we go any farther, I urge you once again to speak, if there is anything you can say in your own defense. You keep out of this. Well, maybe I shouldn't say this, Your Honor. But I, I accuse my parents. <laughs> Let us have order in this court. Order in the court, please. Go on, my boy. Tell us exactly what is in your mind. Well, Your Honor, I don't believe my mother and father should have ever had a child. I don't believe they ever wanted the responsibility. Oh, it wasn't that they were ever unkind to me. They gave me everything I ever wanted except time and attention. I learned to put myself to bed when I was four or five years old and to get my own breakfast if they weren't up yet when it was time to go to school. Did you get along well in school? Oh, yes, sir. I liked it. I had some pretty good friends among my classmates. And now I'm going to announce the winner of the essay contest. We are very pleased and proud that this honor has fallen to a pupil of our school, James Wilson, for his splendid essay, My Country and My Home. <laughs> Come forward, James. I would like to quote a closing line from James' essay, which made a particular appeal to the judges. In the ideal American home, a father is happy to care for his wife, who is happy to care for her children, and they are thankful for their happiness and security. And now we want to meet your mother, James. We want to know the woman who has inspired this splendid essay. The Committee of Mothers is meeting here tomorrow at 11 o'clock to discuss plans for the graduation exercises. And we'd love to have your mother serve on the committee, James. Oh, gee, thanks. I'm sure she'll be pleased. Very well, James. Mom! Mom! Oh, Mom! Hello, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Shirley. Is your mother home? No, she isn't. Oh, never mind. I didn't want to see her especially. Besides, I can see her later. You can offer me a drink if you want to. And I think you want to. Sure, help yourself. Thanks. Well, how about you? Come on, join me. Can't do any more than kill you. Oh, no, thanks. Not for me. I've been hitting it too hard lately. Yeah, I know. It's kind of tough when it gets the best of you. Well, here goes for both of us. Huh. Looks like you're having yourselves a time, you two. What goes on here? This is my first. I wouldn't know about Jim. Mother home yet? No. Means another cold supper, I suppose. Or we eat out. Well, what can you expect? Nine times out of ten, if she did stay home all day cooking, you'd phone the last minute you had a business day and couldn't make it. You women certainly stick together, don't you? Not necessarily. I'd rather stick to an attractive man, any time. 
Home so early, Diane. I was a half hour late. But I was only detained on business. You probably had more important things to do. Well, you needn't be so cross about it. I'm sorry if I'm late. But the buses are so crowded and I couldn't get a taxi. I suppose you couldn't have tried an hour earlier. No, I couldn't. Fix my little drink, James. I, I, I'm exhausted. Are we going to have any dinner tonight? In a minute. It's all in the icebox, ready to serve. Won't you stay and have a bite with us, Shirley? Oh, no, thanks. I have a date. Another time, then. Thanks. Well? May the best man win. I've had just about enough of this. I won't put up with it any longer. What are you talking about? The whole setup. No decent meals on time. The house is always in a mess while you're gadding about making a fool of yourself. You do what you please. Why shouldn't I do what I please? That's okay with me. But you're not going to do it while you're my wife. That suits me. You don't suppose I like going on like this, do you? I'd have divorced you years ago if it hadn't been for Jimmy. Mother, Dad, please. A flood of help you've been to him. A fine home you've made for him. And how about the example you've set him? Out gambling every night, sometimes not even coming home at all. Well, a man has to do something to pass the time. There's nothing to bring a man home to a place like this. Then why do you come home? Maybe I won't in the future. Dad, I've got something to tell you. Yes, sir? It's something about school. I won the essay contest, and the principal said that... I'll say that's fine. Here's five dollars. Go out and celebrate. Oh, never mind, Mom. He'll be back. I don't care whether he comes back or not. It won't be any different if he does. Well, maybe it will. You see, I didn't tell Dad all that happened at school today. The principal wants you to meet with the parents' graduation committee tomorrow at 11. Mrs. Carlisle and Mrs. Whitney are going to be there. All the most important women in the neighborhood. Why, Jimmy. And they really want me to be there. Well, sure they do. And I want you to go, Mom. Gee, he'll be the swellest looking one there. I could wear my new afternoon dress. And that hat I just bought. <laughs> Wait till he gets filled with that hat. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's so funny. <laughs> the mirror ought to tell you. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go to gym school. Well, you certainly look the part. Why don't you act your age? Stop criticizing me. You don't like my clothes. You don't like my hat. You don't like it if I sit around here. You don't like it if I go out. Well, let's stop this ridiculous farce. Why don't we quit? Great idea. Thanks for the suggestion. I'm going to work on the decorating committee. Oh, isn't that swell? Some of us girls thought we could bring some flowers. But if Jimmy's essay was good enough to win the contest, I think he should read it at the graduation exercises. Why, yes, what an excellent idea. Oh, it wasn't anything, really. I wrote about my home, that's all. It's the way any other fellas is. The way a home ought to be. A very happy home, obviously. I'm most anxious to meet your mother. Oh, Mom's swell. Of course, I'm pretty lucky. I'm an only child, and she can devote more time to me than if I had a lot of brothers and sisters. She must take a great interest in her home. She does. That's all she thinks about. But what else is there? What's more important when you come right down to it? A woman's job is her home and family, isn't it? At least that's the way my mom figures. Hello, everybody. Sorry if I'm late. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Wilson's mother. <laughs> She's drunk. <laughs> How shocking. Poor Jimmy. How terrible. <laughs> Mom. Oh, hello, Jimmy. Am I late? I, I, when's the meeting start? Come on, Mom. Let's go home. Oh, what's your hurry? Aren't you going to introduce me? Some other time, Mom. Please, come on. Let's go home. Well, goodbye, folks. Oh, what's your hurry, Jimmy? I want to go to the <laughs> She's drunk. <laughs> oh, shocking. Poor Jimmy. Terrible. Dreadful. <laughs> Did you ever sell shoes before? Uh, no, sir. You think you could? Oh, yes, sir, if you give me a try. You live with your parents? Uh, yes, sir. Well, you look like a good boy. I think I'll give you a try. Now, the job pays $25 a week, and you get an hour off for lunch. Got to be here every morning at 9, work till 6. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay, and I'll show you the stop.
You interested in something in shoes? Yes. I'd like to see those suede slippers in the window. The black ones with the bows. Certainly. <laughs> you better let me help you. Oh, that's all right. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. There. Oh. Eight? Well, you better try again. There's something wrong. <laughs> better with your hand out. Oh. Sixes. <laughs> I'm caught. I'll do it. What do you think? Beautiful. The shoes, I mean. Oh, they look like they might have been made for you. They probably were. Destiny, you know. I'm a fatalist. I believe that everything happens as it should happen. Just like my coming in here and buying these shoes from you. You really believe that? Of course. How much are they? Um, uh, $9.95, including tax. Oh, you'll have to send them COD. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't do that. Well, I mean, we don't make deliveries, see. Oh, well, uh, I don't live very far. Maybe you could drop them off on your way home. Yeah, maybe I could. My name's Kitty Reed. 425 East 54th Street. What time will you be by? Well, I get off work about 6. I guess I can make it in about 10 minutes. Oh, that's fine. I'll be looking for you. OK. Bye. Bye. Two minutes late. Yeah, I know. I had to put away some of the stock. Well, come on in. Thanks. You know, it might not be important, but if someone dropped in accidentally and I had to introduce you, I think it might be just as well if I knew your name. Oh, James Wilson, but everybody calls me Jimmy. Okay, Jimmy. Everyone calls me Kitty. Sit down. Okay, Kitty. Um, will you have some, or would you rather have a drink? Oh, no, thanks. Not for me. I've been hitting that stuff kind of heavy lately. Besides, my mother doesn't like the smell on my breath. You know how mothers are. I've heard tell. I never had one myself, enough to remember. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's OK. I got used to being on my own a long time ago. You live here alone? No, with Sarah Moore. She's in the show with me. Oh, are you an actress? Well, not an actress, exactly. I, I work in a nightclub, the Paradise. Have you ever been there? No, but I'll come and see you some night. Oh, that's swell, Jimmy. I'll be looking for you. You know, it seemed kind of strange to me just living here like this with another friend. Yeah, I know. Not having anyone to come home to. Like a friend. That's right. Well, when I open the door, my mom is sure to call out, is that you, Jim? No matter what time of day or night it is. I guess so I expect it. Of course, I always tell her to go to bed when I'm going to be late, but she never does. She worries about me, I guess. She can't rest until I get home. She sounds sweet. Oh, she is. She's wonderful. She's the best mother a guy ever had. And Dad's pretty swell, too. He takes an interest in everything I do. Why, when we talk, it's just like two fellas my age instead of father and son. Mom says she really has two bows. Must be wonderful to grow up in a home like that. I almost did. My folks split up about three years ago, and I've been on my own ever since. Well, you seem to have done pretty well on your own. Wish I could believe that. Well, I'd better pay you for the shoes before I talk you out of oh, it. Oh, no, don't do that. I mean, I'd like to give them to you as a gift, if you'll let me, as a sort of a celebration. You see, you were my first customer. Well, that's awfully sweet, but you can't afford to give me a gift like that, can you? Oh, sure I can. I've got plenty of money. I'm not just an ordinary shoe salesman, you know. I, I'm just looking into the business and trying it out. If I like it and decide to stay, why, my dad might buy me a store. Oh, I see. <laughs> 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 and that's my first baby picture. Isn't it awful? No, I think it's kind of cute. That's me when I was 10. Hey, you can tell you were going to be beautiful. 
And that's Aunt Harriet. She suffered from chronic indigestion. Yeah, I guess she was suffering from something. Oh, say it's late. I have to be at the Paradise in a half hour. Oh, I better go then. And quick. Well, will I see you soon? I hope so, Jimmy. Pardon me. I thought you'd be gone. You're kind of late, aren't you? Oh, uh, I was just ready to leave. Miss Vera Moore, Mrs. Jimmy Wilson. How do you do? I'm doing fine. So are you, I see. Well, so long, Kitty. Bye, Jimmy. Hey, what is this? You'd better watch your step, hadn't you? Blake? Yeah, Blake. In case you've forgotten, he's madly in love with you. Yeah, I know. But Jimmy seems so different. He, he's so sweet. The kind of a kid every girl dreams about. Now, don't tell me it's love at first sight. Well, what's so impossible about that? Hey, come back with that. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> you know the trouble with cocktail parties is they end too soon. They don't have to. You can make them last as long as you like. Well, I like this one to last at least three days. <laughs> Say, why don't we go down to uh, Jack Taylor's? Down at the beach. You got lots of room, lots of liquor. We spend the weekend. That's a wonderful idea. Listen, everybody. How about going down to Jack Taylor's at the beach for the weekend? That's the idea. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> beach tonight. Oh, Jimmy, I didn't know you were home. Well, I guess you forgot. Tomorrow's my birthday. Oh, that's right, Jim. Uh, well, here. Here's $20. Go out and have a party with your own friends. Take out your best girl. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you and Mom about. Oh, then there is a woman in the case. And what a woman. Take a look at this. Hey, gang, Jimmy's got a girl. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, What's wrong with you? You desire a table? Uh, yes. This way, please. Uh, do you know when Miss Kitty Reed goes on? Well, it's after this number. Miss Sarah, will have a drink first? Oh, yes. Hold on, Miss Uh, Well, I'll bring me two champagne cocktails. Two? Yes, two. Very good, monsieur. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our singing star, Miss Kitty Reed. Happy. 
tough time persuading him to go, but... Well, you see, my grandmother isn't well, and I thought they ought to go see her. Oh, I see. But don't you have some other friends that you'd rather be with? I mean, those that you've known longer than you have me. Well, sure, but... Well, I'd rather be with you. Thank you, Jimmy. I'm flattered. Shall we dance? Okay. That. Are you really? Now, if we're going to be friends, it'll give us a chance to be better acquainted. Oh, I feel as though I've known you for years already. Oh, you do? Well, suppose you start telling me something about myself. All right. Let's see, when you were 10 years old... Oh, now, you... wait a minute. That's going to be a long story. Suppose we set the rest of this one out. Okay. Huh? I took the liberty of sitting here. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Oh, this is Jimmy Wilson, a boy from my hometown. I met him today by accident. This is Mr. Blake, Jimmy, my boss. How do you do? I'm glad to know any friend of Kitty's. Are you going to be in town long, Mr. Wilson? I live here. Oh, I see. I guess you see quite a change in Kitty since the last time you saw her, huh? Oh, not so very much. Of course, her clothes are different. Yes, I'm sure they are. You see, she spends a lot more nowadays than she did back in Iowa. Chance, Kitty? Okay, Charlie. Uh, you'll excuse us, of course, Mr. Oh, Wilson. Sure, go right ahead. Thank you. Where'd you run into the little Lord Polaroid? In a shoe store. Coming in to buy some shoes, and there he was. Isn't that a funny coincidence? Selling shoes, huh? Mm -hmm. Seems like a nice kid. I might be able to help him do better. Look, Charlie, lay off. I'm only trying to help them. I know other people you've helped, and they all Shut end up. up. I can use the kids. Just whose welfare are you interested in? Here's the mine. Yours, of course. Okay, see that it stays that way. I want you to give me a build-up with the kids. Tell them what a great guy I am. What a good friend I've been to you. I might find them useful. Okay. I ordered for all of 
purpose. I hope it's all right, but you see, tomorrow's my birthday, and I'm celebrating. Well, your birthday? Well, well, of course it's all right. As a matter of fact, we'll make a night of it. What do you say, kitten? Fine, I'm for it. Well, hey, uh, Jimmy, happy birthday to you. Happy Thank birthday, you. Jimmy. Everything satisfactory, Mr. Blake? Oh, fine, thanks, sir. Say, you haven't forgotten about that package you left with me. Oh, no, uh, no. Uh, I'll have it picked up in a couple of days. Okay. And Trent. Yes. This party's on the kid. Thanks. Say, what are you doing tomorrow? Or today, I guess. It must be Sunday morning already. It is. Why? What's on your mind? Well, I thought with my folks the way that we could spend my birthday together. Well, why not? I'll tell you, Jimmy. You come to my apartment about 12, and I'll fix you an old-fashioned birthday breakfast. There, I want to wait for the weekend. Oh, it's swell. You know, tonight's been great, only it'd be nice if Mr. Blake hadn't come along. If you'd ask him, he'd say the same about you. Don't you like Mr. Blake? Oh, I guess he's all right. Only... Oh, isn't he all right? Yeah, I guess. Well, don't you like him? Sure, but I, I wouldn't want you to be like him. Why? What's wrong with you? Oh, he's money mad, wants to get rich quick. Hey, is that bad? Sometimes. I think you have a better future in the shoe business. Kitty, Trent's been asking if you sing a song. Well, I'd be glad to, Mr. Trent. Thanks, Miss Reed. It'll be a treat for my patron. Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a big surprise for you this evening. The star from the paradise, Miss Kitty Reed. You're that girl, isn't you? Oh, she sure is. I've never met anyone like her before. She's rather an expensive girl to take out. Oh, nothing's too good for a girl like her. When love 
Thank you, Miss Reed. Gee, you were swell, Kitty. Thanks, Jimmy. So as I was saying, Jimmy, if you'd like to add to your income sometime, I might be able to throw a few odd jobs your way. What kind of odd jobs? Oh, little things you could do for me after working hours. Here's my card, if you're interested. Look me up sometime. Well, thanks, I will. Yeah, it's getting late. We've got places to go. Waiter, check. Oh, oh, let me have that. You took care of it as paradise. Okay. Oh. oh. Gee, I'm afraid I don't have quite enough cash to cover this. Well, they'll take your check. Oh, will they? Well, have you got a blank check? Sure. So you use the same bag I do. Oh, yeah. Well, let's get going. <clears throat> Come on. Hey. Yes, sir? I want you to go to the bank for me and make a deposit. Yes, sir. And, uh, Jimmy. You might put these through. Maybe they'll be good now. If they bounce back again, I'm going to put that Mr. Smith in jail. Take the other window. Oh, thanks. I'm sorry. You can deposit this. Oh. Sit down. Bet you dropped in. You've been thinking over my suggestion? Yes, in a way I have. You see... And you could use a little cash, is that right? Yes. There's a friend of mine in trouble, and I'd like to help him out. Well, how much do you want? About $100. Oh, well, that's a lot of money, Jimmy. But I guess I can advance it to you. When you begin to work for me, why, you can pay me back. That'd be swell if you would, Mr. Blake. I could start working for you any time you say. Good. You can begin right now. First thing I want you to do is to go to the bank and rent a safe deposit box. At times, there uh, may be some valuable papers I want you to take care of for me. All right, I'll do that. Now, don't be surprised if this job gets you up at odd hours of the night. I'll make it worth your while. Well, maybe I ought to quit the shoe store. No, there's no need to do that. You stay at the store until I get you on a full-time job. If you say so. Now, tonight, I want you to go to this address and pick up a package. You just show him this, and he'll know it's okay. Well, should I bring the package back? No. Uh, in the morning, put it in the safe deposit box. And I'll let you know when I want it. All right. Jimmy. This will take care of the rental of the box, and you can keep the rest of it. Thanks. By the way, I'd rather you wouldn't say anything to anyone about working for me. You know, if your boss found out, he might not like it. I won't. And when you get through work tomorrow, give me a ring. Yes, sir. You two staying home tonight? Oh. Well, your father's going to the club to play cards later. I thought you and I might do something, but I see you have other plans. Oh, I'm sorry. I have got a rather heavy date. Why don't you call up one of your gangs? Maybe I will. Well, bye now. Bye. Mm -hmm. Jimmy's changed these last few weeks. Have you noticed it, Dan? Yeah, he seems to have grown up overnight. Well, I don't like it. 
do you suppose he's doing out every night in the week? For several nights, he didn't come home at all. Maybe he stayed with a friend. A little late, start asking questions now. Well, after all, you're his father. You ought to keep an eye on him. Well, you're his mother. You stay home once in a while, you might know what he's up to. Maybe he's got a girlfriend, that's all. I have now, as you say. Well, I hope he's not going to start taking after you. <laughs> Hello, Kitty. I, uh, I brought you a little something. Oh, Jimmy. Not another present. Why, sure. I like buying presents for you. It's fun. Jimmy, I don't want you to be offended, but I've got to ask you something. You're not mixed up in anything that isn't quite on the level, are you? Whatever gave you that idea? Oh, I don't know, except that you have so much more money to spend lately. Look, don't you worry about me. I wouldn't do anything that wasn't on the right side of the law. I hope not, Jimmy. You're so sweet, I wouldn't want you to change. Why should I change? People do in this town. Well, just so you don't, Kitty. Say, Eddie Menace gave me two tickets for the folly Sunday. Oh, that's fine. You can just cancel that like you did our luncheon date today. Oh, now, look, Kitten, can I help it if I'm busy? I don't know, hanged if I can find time to do the things we've planned. The business is sure picking up. Well, that's good. You bet for both of us. The higher Charlie Blake goes. The higher Kitty Reed. You said it. Well, bye, darling. Oh, uh, I meant to ask you before. Have you put Jimmy Wilson to work? Why, uh, I haven't laid eyes on him. Have you seen him? Well, sure, several times. You asked me to give you a build-up, remember? Must have been a swell build-up you gave him to keep him away like this. Well, the way he talked, I thought by now he'd be pounding on your door for a job. No, I haven't seen him. I guess he's pounding on the wrong door. <laughs> I guess. Hey, you talk about me giving you a stand-up. Where have you been disappearing to after the show every night? You sure get out of that dressing room in a hurry. And I've been missing you. Well, Charlie, you know the old saying. Early to bed and early to rise. Well, that's me. <laughs> Bye now. Goodbye. You're deal with Mr. Blake. How long have you been with him? A few weeks. I'm not working full time for him yet. Uh, I see. I'll be with you in a minute. Now, this is very important. See that Mr. Blake gets this note tonight. And be sure that you give it to no one but him. All right, I'll do that. I'm telling you, Charlie. I'm getting worried about that Wilson kid. The kid's doing all right. I'll say he is. He's on the loose already, hitting the high spot. And that's dangerous. He's getting around fast. About time you wise them up so he won't talk out of turn. I'll let him know what he's doing when I'm ready. So far, the kid's handled close to a hundred grand. And just where would we be without him? You know, we're too hot to handle the stuff ourselves. I still don't like it. But you know, when a young kid like that gets a couple of drinks under his belt and a pretty gown on his arm, there's no telling what he'd say or do. Look, we'll be in the clear another week, so just relax. You better get in the other office. Someone's coming. What's the idea coming back here? I told you what to do with that package. I know you did, Mr. Blake, but Mr. Carlton said to give you this note. He said it was important. It's all right, Jimmy. You did the right thing. Better wait out in the outer office. I may have something else for you to do. Okay, Mr. Blake. Tried to get the painting out of Gordon's dead storage. Couldn't make it as the place is being watched. Don't send any more packages. I'm leaving town. Take my tip and do the same. Call. Well, how do you like that? I thought that stuff was safe there. Thirty thousand dollars worth of diamonds. What are you going to do now, Sally? You two are going down to the warehouse and get it out tonight and take the kid with you. Take the kid? What for? It may take two of you to do the job. I'll have him rent a car and he can drive for you. Oh, Jimmy. I want you to go down to Olson's before it closes and rent a car. Come back here at 12 o'clock tonight and pick up the boys and take them down to Gordon's warehouse to pick up a package. 
Then drive him back here. Okay, Mr. Blake. Hello, Kitty. This is Jimmy. Remember me? I'm your boyfriend. You'd better be. Can I see you tonight? We'll go dancing. Of course you can, Jimmy. Oh, swell. I've got a little business to take care of, and I'll be about a half hour late. I've got something awfully important to ask you. Now, don't tell me you're going to propose to me. Maybe. All right, hon. I'll be looking for you. Wait here. I'll be back in an hour. Charlie. I know you didn't. You expected the kid. He'll be here. First of all, you and I are going to straighten out something. What's going on between you two? I don't know what you're talking about, Charlie. No? Well, then I'll make it clear. I heard that phone conversation you had a little while ago. He was talking from my office. So you really fell in love with the kid. Now look, nobody's going to take you away from me. Nobody. You understand? Why, why, Charlie, you don't really think I fell for that kid, do you? Why, you asked me to string him along. Can I help it if he fell for me? Don't worry about it, will you? He's as good as forgotten. I'm going to give you a chance to prove that. When he gets here, I want you to get rid of him. Your way. Or would you rather have me do it? Okay, Charlie. It ought to be a cinch. I'll be in there listening. Come on, honey, let's get going. We've only got a few hours. I have some work to do later on. I'm not going. Hey, are you kidding? Why, over the phone, you just got through saying we'd go someplace. I know, but after I talked to you, I changed my mind. An old friend of mine called, and I'm going out with him. Hey, you say that so convincingly, I almost believe it. You can believe it. Do you mean that? Of course I mean it. Yeah, but look what... Oh, you poor chump. Did you really take me seriously? Did you think for one minute that I loved you or that I wanted to marry you? Why, can you imagine Kitty Reed cooped up in a little two-before cottage with a string of kids climbing all over? Oh, no, not Kitty. You know, Jimmy, I thought that for a while you might go someplace. But you'll always be a shoe salesman at 25 a week. And uh, my ambition's a little higher than that. Now, why don't you run along and peddle your paper? You annoy me. Are you satisfied, Charlie? Well, you saved me a lot of trouble, kitten. I'll see you in the morning. I knew that nervous trigger finger of yours would get us into trouble sooner or later. Well, it was either him or us. What about the kid? He ought to be here any minute. He's ready to scream. And you better do some fancy talking, Blake. We're going to have trouble with him. Just let me handle him. Why didn't you tell me I was driving a car while hold up? Oh, I didn't see any reason to tell you, Jimmy. I never told you about any of the other jobs you did for me. What other jobs? What do you mean? You don't think I've been paying you the kind of money I have just to pick up packages? 
If they'd been on a level, I could have gotten a messenger for a lot less than you've been getting. I didn't know there was anything crooked about the job. I don't want any part of it. I'm quitting right now. No, you're not. Nobody ever quits on Charlie Blake. If he doesn't want him to. Whatever I've done, I'm not going to stand for murder. I'll tell the police. I'll tell them about you. I'll tell them what you did to me. I'll tell... You won't tell them anything. You're in this whether you like it or not. Just as much as if you handle a gun. You tell the police and you'll get 20 years. Now go ahead and talk. Better. Since you're getting panicky, tell you what you do. You go on home and get a good night's rest and forget about it. Tomorrow morning, go back to the stores if nothing had happened. And don't worry about getting into a jam. I have enough influence to pull you out. Hello? Hello, this is Jimmy Wilson. Is Kitty there? I gotta talk to her. Just a minute, and I'll see if she's here. It's Jimmy Wilson. He wants to talk to you. Tell him I'm not here. Well, I'm sorry, Jimmy, but she's not here. Thanks. Get, get wise to yourself. You knew from the start nothing could come of this business with Jimmy Wilson. Not as long as Blake was in love with you. You knew eventually you'd have to brush him off. But if he hadn't met me, then maybe none of this would have happened. I introduced him to Blake. Okay, but you're not to blame for him getting mixed up with him. And it could have happened a dozen other ways. Oh, I know, but I still feel responsible. Oh, don't kid yourself. If it hadn't been you, it would have been some other gal. And it might have been one that wouldn't have helped him out of the spot he got into. <laughs> if he's worth anything at all, he'll pull himself up now and get a fresh start. Oh, honey, you'll forget all about this in time. Why, five years from now, you'll hardly remember what he looked like. Oh, I know. You think you'd like to go away with him and start all over again. But that's just a romantic dream. <laughs> Why, you'd be sick of it in a month if you tried it. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Holden? Yes. Anything I can do for you? Yes. Have you a boy working here by the name of Jimmy Wilson? Yes. We'd like to see him. I'm sorry. He hasn't come in yet. Most unusual. Jimmy's always on time. We got orders to check up on him. Check up on Jimmy? Yeah. What's he been doing? That's what we're going to find out. He's been seen with some pretty shady characters. Yeah. Let's have his address. Why, of course. 465 Lindhurst Drive. Thanks, Mr. Holden. I'm afraid your boy won't show up today. I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Holden, but I have some business. There are two men here asking about you from police headquarters. Police headquarters? Well, what do they want to know about me? They didn't say. Have they got anything against you, Jimmy? No, of course not. What could they have against me? Well, I don't know what you do outside the shop. They said you've been seen with some pretty shady characters. Maybe you better go home, get your folks, take you down to police headquarters. Get this thing straightened out. I don't like police coming here, Jimmy. It isn't good for business. Well, I don't blame you, Mr. Holden. I'll go right home and do that. All right. I'm sure there must be some mistake. 
Two plain clothesmen from police headquarters have been to the shoe store asking you about me. Well, that's pretty quick work. They must have traced the car. Now, look, you got me into this. You got to get me out. You said you would. Take it easy. I said I would, and I will. Now, go to the bank and get all the stuff out of the safe deposit box and lay low for the rest of the day. At 11 o'clock tonight, meet the boys at 6 and Kent Street. And then what? They'll have some money for you and they'll slip you out of town. After a few weeks, when it blows over, you can come back. Okay, I'll be there. You got the stuff? It's all in here. Get back in here so nobody can see it. Matter, kid. What happened to you? I don't know. You'd better come along with us. We'll report it to the police. No, no, fella. Just, just help me find a cab, will you? I, I want to go home. Okay, kid. Just as you say. Mom? Dad? Mother? Dad? Hello? Yes, sir. Is Mr. Wilson in? Tell him his son wants him. Just a minute, I'll see. Oh, I've never had such rotten luck. Why, you beat me every hand. Your boy's on the phone, Mr. Wilson. He wants to talk to you. Tell him I'm not here. All right, Riley, come on, deal. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir, but your father isn't here. Well, if he comes in, tell him I call, will you?
that? Expecting somebody? No. How about a hamburger? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. If you're broke, it's on the house. Come on, have one, son. Plenty of onions, eh? French fries and all the trimmings. I'll trust you. You can pay me any time you want. Okay. Thanks. Give and take. That's my system. Share what you've got, and you'll never want. I've had a lot of guys come in here broke. Never sent them away hungry. And I don't lose by it, either. They always come back and pay. Most people are okay. Better give me that gun, son. You can't eat with one hand. I saw it on your face when you first came in here. I've been around, seen all sorts in my time. You learn things about people in this business. Mm, loaded, too. That's dangerous. I might have put up a fight. You know, some guys get sore when you pull a gun on them. And they don't stop to think. Why, you might have even killed me. Not meaning it, either. Such things happen. I know. Better put this away before somebody comes in and sees it. Okay, I'll keep it for you. You can have it any time you want. Funny thing you dropping in here this way. Why? Oh, I've been thinking lately I'd like to have a boy like you to help out here. Want a job? Sure, I want a job. Fifteen bucks a week. Your food and lodgings. I got a shack here in back of the restaurant. Ain't much, but it's comfortable enough. Radio, some flowers in the garden, and a dog. What do you say? Well, you're taking an awful chance, aren't you? I mean, offering me a job this way without knowing anything about me? You see, before I... I've got to tell you, though, there's one condition attached to it. You'll have to go to church with me every Sunday morning. Church? That's right. Six days a week, I work for myself. On the seventh, I work for the church. I'm an usher. And it wouldn't look right, you living in my house and not going to church. Of course, that's only an hour on Sunday mornings. In the afternoons, on fine days, we could go fishing oh, or... Gee, that sounds swell. Hey, my hamburger. You're <laughs> learning fast. <laughs> Well, a nice kitten. Thanks. Still thinking about Jimmy, huh? What makes you think that? Maybe the way you sang that song? Oh, now, look, kitten, I know you've been searching for that kid for two months. Why don't you give it up? He's probably a thousand miles from you. I tell you what we'll do. When you get through tonight, we'll go out and paint the town. You need some recreation. Okay, Charlie.
the matter? Not hungry? Not very. Something's bothering you. What is it? Homesick? No. I thought you liked it here pretty well. You seem to be settling down. Well, I do like it, Al. It's not that. In fact, it's the only time I've ever really been happy. Oh, now, spill it, son. You can tell me. Well, it's just that I've been thinking things over, that's all. You want to go back and straighten yourself out? Square accounts? Take the load off your mind? Yeah, I guess that's it. Only I don't seem to find the courage to do it. Would you help me, Al? I've been waiting to hear you say that, son. Sure, I'll help you. We'll go back and face it together. After they hear your story, I'm positive they'll give you a break. Don't worry. Ah, gee, that's swell. Al, I feel better already. You see, Miss Reed, I couldn't let Jimmy give himself up unless he'd seen you first. And I wanted to see you too, Jimmy, to explain and tell you the truth. Blake was in the other room that night listening. I had to say what I did or he'd have killed you. They tried to the night they beat you up. Then, then the things you said weren't true. Of course they weren't true. You're kidding. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, Blake's the cause of all your trouble and mine too. If he finds out you're here, he'll kill us both. No, he won't, because he's going to the police station with me. You and Al can call the cops and follow. Jimmy, wait! Jimmy! Just a minute, Mr. Walford. Hello, Jimmy. What brings you to see me? Not in trouble again, are you? No, but you are. I'm giving myself up to the police, and you're going with me. You're taking it a lot for granted, aren't you? Maybe I am. But you're going to tell everything that's happened between us. And if I don't, the police are on their way here to see that you do. OK, Jimmy. I'll go with you. I tried to take the gun away from him, but it went off. Oh, I know I've lied, I've cheated. I've done a lot of things that I shouldn't have done. But maybe I wouldn't have started lying to my schoolmates if I hadn't been ashamed of my, my home life. If I hadn't been ashamed that my parents were, were denying me the understanding that a fellow's entitled to. The love and protection that a boy needs. The guidance that sets him straight. And that's why I accuse my parents. <laughs> James Wilson, your story is supported by much of the evidence in this case, and I think indicates clearly that you are not guilty of the killing of Charles Blake. And on that count, I find you not guilty. And on the remaining counts of having aided and abetted in the transportation and concealment of stolen property, I find you guilty and sentence you to five years in state prison. That sentence is hereby suspended and you are placed on probation for two years. You are to remain in the custody of your parents until you are 21, during which time I hope that you will justify the confidence I am placing in you. I will, Your Honor. Sir. Jimmy! As for you, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, you are not on trial here. But you have seen the tragedy brought about by the neglect your boy suffered. And you are not the only parents guilty of such neglect. I speak to parents everywhere when I say that if, in the pursuit of your own pleasures and occupations, you neglect your children, realize now before it is too late, this might have been your boy. Mm -hmm.